In this video, we're going to cover all the AI features that you can use to level up your Power BI reports. We're going to go through things like being able to create sentiment score based on your free texts in Power Query, using AI visuals like key influencers to understand the trends of your data, to other features like looking for quick insights to speed up your data analysis, all of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So AI or using AI at the moment is a pretty hot topic with all of these different AI tools like ChatGPT to make your life easier. But today what we're going to do is we're going to cover all the AI or AI-like features that you can natively use in Power BI to either make your development life easier or to make your data analysis even faster. Before we get started and looking at these AI features, I just want to preface this to make sure that if you're using and utilizing these tools, make sure that you're still double checking the data and the results that you're getting from these because they're not always foolproof. So it might speed up your analysis, but you're not quite sure or you might stumble upon some issues if you're kind of double checking the data. So make sure you're double checking the data that the AI returns to you. So let's start with a simple one. So here we are in Power Query at the moment. We have loaded some information about uh, product reviews here in this table. And let's say you wanted to create a new column that extracts the review rating from this text. So you can see it says 3.0 out of the five stars. And let's say we just want to get the 3.0 as a different column. Now, what you normally do is to split this column or write some Power Query to extract just that first three text. But an easier way and a more, say, more convenient way to do this is by using the add columns through examples. So under add column ribbon up here, you can select column from examples. And then you'll see that it will create a column here. And from here, you can type what you want to extract from your table. As you notice, when I type 3.0, it started to fill up. It looks for patterns in your data to see what you're trying to get. So in this case, we wanted 3.0 and this AI automatically kind of understood what the context of that is. It, so you can see that it's filled up all of those different rows. You can keep typing here to make sure that to correct and give more samples of your data for the AI to work with. It will also create the Power Query formula that you need. So you don't even need to know what to write. It will just write it for you. So if you just hit OK, you'll see that with just those two clicks, you're able to basically create your own Power Query formula without having to type it yourself. Next are the AI insights that are available here in Power Query. And these ones are sort of pretty interesting. You'll find the AI insights under here, under the home ribbon, and you have a few options here to choose from. You have text analytics, which is a group of, if we just insert here, Let's just have a look at what the, these different functions are. And I did cover them separately in another video in greater detail. So if you wanted to know how and get a summary of all of these, I'll leave a link to that video in the description box below. But anyway, let's go through it uh, quickly here. So as you can see, we have three different text analysis that you can use. You have the tech language, which if you fed it, uh, let's say free text fields or columns. If you have different languages in those rows, it will give you an ISO code giving you or telling you what that language is, um, which uh, this ISO code then you can use for these two other text analytics functions. The extract key phrases extracts key phrases from the free text that you have. So it's good if you're, for example, like trying to categorize comments or free text fields where there's too many words or phrases that are being used. It's a good way to, to kind of create sort of tags so that you can categorize them within your reports. And finally, you have the score sentiment, which it uses AI or it uses cognitive services to look for key phrases or keywords that are being used within those sentences, within those uh, phrases, and it will Will generate a score based of 100. So this is a good way to kind of understand in bulk what the sentiment is for um, certain, let's say, product reviews, for example, without needing to rely so much on the star ratings. So here I've shown and I've kind of used this the, these functions in this Amazon reviews uh, report here. So as you can see, the detect language has just simply we've just fed it the review text here and it's given us English. 
So that's what the detect language does. You have the score sentiment, which if you wait for a second. So the score sentiment, as you can see, it gives a rating out of 100. So this is in decimals at the moment, but 0.5 is 50%. And obviously the higher it is, the more positive the sentiment is. And then finally, you have the key phrases. So out of this review text, you can see that we have a few, you know, there could be a lot of words or phrases that are being said there. And what this does is it generates a list of key phrases, which you can now use to say, and it's a good way to analyze, for example, you know, what are for those that are low rated or have low sentiment, what are the key phrases that they're saying? So this is a good way to analyze that. Apart from text analytics, you also have access to vision, which is, there's only one function here that you can use at the moment, which is uh, image tagging. So what it does is if you have a list of table with um, image URLs, it will scan those images and it will look for items or elements within that image and generate tags for you based on that. So it's good if you're trying to kind of categorize images, creating some descriptions or some way to group them without having to manually create them yourself. So as an example here, um, you can see here we have a, a list of images here, just random images of some gaming setups that I found online, and they have image URLs here. And uh, if you wanted to see how that looks like, it's basically this. It's these, these are the images. And if you go back to here and you use that AI function, what it will do is it will generate different tags like this so that you can categorize, let's say, what it finds within your image. So does it see a stage? Does it see a monitor? Does it see a mouse? Does it see a table? Um, which is a good way, uh, like kind of like key phrases to categorize your data. So these AI insights, both the text analytics and the vision, both require premium uh, for you to use. So if you only have pro or even free, you won't be able to utilize them just because you send that data to cognitive services online and you just get the result back. Um, so you won't be able to use it if you don't have a premium capacity. Azure Machine Learning though, if you have your own ML model that you can connect to, this doesn't need a premium. So if you have your own model that you've trained within your organization, you can just simply connect to it using this option. So now let's go back to the report here. As you can see, I've already imported a few values here, a few tables and a few charts. As you can see, we have a line chart here and then a bar chart. A few AI powered visuals that you can use is if you have a look at this and let's say we wanted to know why this increase happened here. If you right click here, you'll see that you'll have this option analyze. And if you click explain the increase, what it will do is it will scan through your whole data set and it will generate a list of, you know, different factors that could have affected or possible explanations as to why this increase happened. So you'll see here we have uh, different visuals like this. Not just this, you'll see that there are a few more different visuals here to understand, okay, what is contributing to this peak. So for example, some of sales here, you might want to show it as, as a waterfall chart, or you might want to show it as a, a ribbon chart to show ranking uh, month on month, uh, which is pretty handy. And uh, if you like one, you can just simply add this to your page. And that's basically your visual and the kind of analysis already made for you. And you didn't have to do anything apart from just right clicking, right? Another way is obviously at the moment we right click the, to explain the increase. You also have consecutively a way to right click and explain the decrease, which does the sort of opposite way. If you don't have a kind of time based uh, chart, can, if you have a look at this bar chart, for example, if you wanted to understand beverages, which is the highest selling category that we have, you can right click that and you'll have analyze to understand the distribution of that and what affected that, um, that sort of spike and increase. So you'll see here, we have two different axes. You have the, the gray, area chart, which is the sum of sales. And then in proportion to that, uh, next to it is the sum of sales for sales representative, which kind of gives you a kind of way to show those proportions and where it increases and where it doesn't. Um, you can disable that like this. And like before, if you like this uh, analysis, you can simply just hit add to page and it will create that analysis and add it to your page for you. Along with this, what you can have are what we call smart narratives, which is a way to generate sort of natural language analysis on the data that you have automatically with just the click of a button. So I'm going to create a copy of our line chart here, just so that we have it here. And then what we're going to do is when we click this chart, 
We'll just simply convert this into a smart narrative, which if you select, it will generate some analysis trying to analyze, you know, that change in data. So understanding uh, when it increased or decreased and, uh, you know, what are some different anomalies that it found. And as you can see, it's in natural language format. So you can add it as part of your analysis in your reports, or you can add it as a tooltip. So if I uh, just delete this, if I'm able to delete this at some point, thank you very much. I'm just going to drag this here. So under format your visual, you'll see under general, uh, it's not very easy to find under header icons and then icons, you'll find the smart narrative tooltip here. If you turn that on, it will add another tooltip there on the top right, which if you click, it will generate that analysis for you without removing the visual altogether. So that's a good way to kind of add that um, AI element in your visual without having to do any extra work. Speaking of natural language, there's also the Q&A feature, which uh, again uses natural language, uh, or you can ask your questions in natural language, which Power BI will then return results for you based on that. So the Q&A function or the Q&A visual you will find somewhere here. So this one Q&A. So if we look for, let's say, highest sales by category, category name, something like this, if you click that, you will see that it will give you the, the highest uh, selling category as a visual right here. And all I had to do was type the question that I wanted. So fairly easy. Key influencers is a good AI visual that you can use to explain the uh, distribution or the cause of uh, values increasing or decreasing. So you can find the key insights, uh, key influencers visual here. So if you click it and let's say we want to analyze the increase or decrease of sales and uh, let's try to understand it based on certain things like we want to see based on product name or based on category name perhaps based on order date let's add a few more things here and uh, let's say we want to add customer country Yeah, so here we go. So for example, here you can see if we change influ what influences sales to decrease. So you'll see it will, based on what we put on the explain by it, we'll try to understand the correlation with the average sales and what is contributing to this decrease, uh, which is just giving us a different kind of list here from countries, customer countries to different products. And you can also see a segmented view of those kind of averages based on the total count, which again is something that can speed up your data analysis if you're looking for sort of key influencers for data's increase or decrease. The decomposition tree is a good AI visual to allow you to drill down into kind of different dimensions of your data to understand what's contributing the highest or the lowest. And it's pretty interactive. So let me show you how that works. So I'm going to make some space here. Actually, we'll, yeah, we'll delete this one and we'll add decomposition tree like this. And we're going to add sales again in our analyze well here. And let's say we want to understand a uh, category. So we're going to add, look for category name. If you click plus here, it will allow you to choose how you want to split your data. So not necessarily all of your categories, but which categories are, let's say the highest value. So you'll see um, it will now get us this sort of top three of those categories. And then if you wanted to drill down even further, let's say you wanted to see out of those beverages, I want to know which countries those customers are from. So let's, I've just added country here in our explain by, if you hit plus here, it will allow you to then see higher or low value and it will give you like a breakdown of those countries. And you can add more and more levels here, which allows you to kind of drill down uh, using the decomposition tree. I think I covered this in a separate video, so I'll leave a link to that video as well as for my other AI visual videos in the description box below. Anomaly detection is a good way to find out any data points that are going beyond the typical range that you set. And it's a pretty easy one to enable. So here, for example, we have a um, list of sales or the sum of sales for different dates uh, for the duration of uh, what we have 
have here in our data. And to add this anomalies analysis here, you just need to click this analyze this visual and then toggle find anomalies. So you can adjust the sensitivity of this anomalies finder and then you can increase or decrease. And based on this sensitivity, it will increase more points or, or remove points here. If you click on any of these points, what it will do is it will try to create some or generate some analysis based on that. How far off is it from your expected range? And if you add further values in the explain by, like for example, you want to know based on customer's country, based on product or based on category name, if you hit apply, those possible explanations at the bottom will update accordingly. Now, I'm not sure why it's not updating, but if you add a few more, I'm sure that will update too. So maybe we'll, let's see if we can select a different one. So here, for example, yeah. So you can see there is a little bit of an analysis here, as well as some possible explanations um, for this anomaly. So based on categories or quantity sold or you know, based on country. Auto clustering lets you group your data and segment them into kind of uh, different groups so that you can analyze them uh, sort of individually. So here we have a scatter graph, scatter plots visual. And what we have is basically each dot would be a sale. And uh, the y axis that we have is the quantity for that order. Then the sum of sales is on the x axis. So if you wanted to kind of create some cluster groups here, you can simply right click or go down here and select automatically find clusters. You can set how many clusters you want, or you can just use auto. Uh, let's just say we want to group this into four different clusters. If you hit OK, what it will do is it will create a grouping for us, you know, based on proximity. And you'll see that you have now four different clusters to choose from. It adds this, uh, this grouping here, which if you now add as a, as a slicer, if you wanted to analyze, let's say just cluster one, there we go, cluster two, cluster three and four, and you know, in total. So if you wanted to analyze them and group them in this kind of logical order. Now let's move on to the service because there are a few things that you can use uh, in the service to, you know, which is AI based that can help you get insights. Now, the first thing that you can do is get quick insights from the Power BI service uh, from your data sets. So here I have opened my uh, workspace, my premium sandbox uh, workspace, and I have just one report here, a report and a data set. And the report already, you know, generates some visuals that I've created for this data set. But uh, let's say you've just imported the data, you've created the model, and you wanted to get some quick insights on this. Um, how you would do it is by clicking the uh, ellipsis icon, and then uh, get insights. So now it's view insights because I've already generated it. So if you click view insights, so these are kind of quick insights that Power BI is generated for you. Yeah, so these are the quick insights that uh, Power BI has automatically created for us. So you can see that we have some analysis here, like how many comments, when they've happened. It's quite a lot of really good information here, actually. And it allows you to kind of before you even dive into the data, you know, look for interesting insights within your data. And all I had to do was click one button from the service. So this is pretty handy. The last thing that I wanted to show you is this get insights from your reports within the service. So it's this button here on the ribbon. And what it does is it will analyze and try to look for key insights that you have within your report page. So at the moment here, we don't have a lot, but I'm going to move to the history page here. And if you click get insights right now, what it will do is it will generate some insights based on the kind of visuals that we have. So based on the, the review volumes, based on, uh, you know, three month averages. So as I hover over these insights, it will highlight those parts of the reports and it will give some sort of analysis and, you know, some, some natural language analysis on these uh, visuals. So pretty handy if you have a bunch of visuals that you've just chucked into a page and you wanted to get some analysis out of it. And that's really it for this video. It's quite lengthy because there's quite a lot of AI or AI-like uh, functions that you can use in Power BI. So I really hope that I haven't missed anything. If you think I've missed anything, leave it in the comment section box below so everyone knows it is available. Thanks for watching as usual. 
Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so I know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.